gonna put a grill over the fire once the fire burns down with coals. I'm gonna put the grill on, I'm gonna put a frying pan on and put um, oil on it and then put the macro on and cook it that way. They taste really good. You concur, Chef? I concur. Sounds great. Freshly caught. Doesn't get much better than that. All right, we're up here on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia and in the midst of the 100 Wild Islands, which is a very amazing place to be. And today we're going looking for our own food. Foraging. I mean, I'm pretty excited. I don't know. We've spent a lot of time on the coastlines and we, you know, we haven't really used it as a, as a resource for finding food. And I think that's kind of like, it'll be interesting to see what's available for us to eat. Uh, I'm excited to learn. We got the folks from Brooklyn Warehouse coming and we're going to be on the property of uh, the Silver Island Oyster Farm. Uh, I'm excited to learn a lot, and oh, man, I'm, we have no other food with us, so I'm hoping we find something to eat. <laughs> and I'm hungry, so it's time to get I'm going. Very hungry. Let's go find some food. Woo! We love working on the water and uh, living on the land, basically, and from the land. Hi, I'm uh, Trevor Monroe with Sober Island Oysters. Oyster will grow specific to it's body water, so each oyster has a distinctive taste. To sit down and taste them all is a lot of fun, but even just to try one and try that, try that sea, it's, it's just like being at the beach and falling in the water. You get that, uh, you get that sea water in your mouth. It's uh, that and, and much more. It's just uh, a nice plump piece of meat from the sea. This is uh, like a seaside lamb's quarters. It's kind of like Swiss chard, spinachy flavor. Okay. So there's lots of this. If you've ever seen lamb's quarters, it looks pretty much identical to this. Um, but, you know, it goes by the ocean and it's just naturally, you know, a little bit salty, but very green. more beach peas over here. It's uh, like a seaside uh, beach pea, they call it. This would be really good for salads and stuff, would it? Oh yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, just pick it off the stem. You look at it, yeah. and you see what's in the garden, and they're insanely close. Well, it tastes like peas. It's like a really... It's like a green sweet. bean. Yeah, like a green bean. It's a green, yeah. green, green bean. It's really cool. Yeah. So this is like a wood sorrel. So it's very lemony, citrusy. It's really good. There's oysters. Oh, and a fish. <laughs> So these ones are actually harvested on the surface, yeah. whereas a lot are harvested, like they're buried. You get to like dig for them and stuff. So there's, there's definitely a different kind of flavor profile. Um, I find these a little bit more salty, which is better in my mind. Yeah, a little mineral. The ones that come out of here are usually a lot, a little, like a little on the smaller side. Yeah. More potent flavor. Yeah. You get the deeper oysters and they're, they're huge. It's like a, like the size of a shoe sometimes. And right. just, they're real rubbery. Though. Yeah, big time. They're massive. And you'll, but you'll you know, they've got their own quality as well. Right? You'll no notice with these is that they're, because they're from the surface, you have the waves going over them all the time. So they're very uniform, you okay. know, because the waves shape them like rocks. So they're like smooth kind of? Like they're very, yeah, they're very smooth and they all look, you know, generally the same. And these are just beautiful. Very briny. Chowder to like retrieve them. For yeah, they <laughs> chowder the oyster dog. This is not happening already. <laughs> we on the farm. Hey man, the rock lines that we take a four wheeler out all this rock road out through here, across this beach with a boat and trailer, go get the oysters, row out, come back, boat and trailer back through the woods. 
and bring, and bring them to you guys. This year, the price is definitely going up for the winter. No question. It has to. Yeah. Yeah. But I will drop it back down in the spring. Oh, look at this. And you're actually seeing water come in. This is this is this is fluke for you. This is the game changer. This. This is what made it happen. This right here. This made everything happen. Yeah. It was stagnant scum pond. Yeah. It's over on pond, and it was a pond. Yeah. This opened up, and. Basically, this stagnant body of water. There must have been some coming through the beach, but not enough for anything to survive. And within two years, the sea life was back. Franklin's catching perch out of there like that. But right now, you're seeing the water come in, which is uh, not too many people get to see that. Like, we're, we're a very, very unique oyster firm, like, worldwide. Like, to have this seclusion, uh, it's in our backyard. We're the only ones that put a boat in it. It's a private lake. Like there's not, it's not, uh, yeah. Completely. It's like buried treasure in your backyard. Pretty much, yeah. Well, yeah, 40,000 feet of rope. Yeah. We hand scrape. I'll show you when we grab the line here. We scrape by hand three times a year. They're not as big as you typically want, but they should be full and sweet. Yeah. Now soon, if we didn't kill the mussels, you'll look at that stuff and you'll see pepper in there. If we see that, we're f***ed. I'd say our goal is a five-year oyster, three inch, two inch wide, and like an inch and a half fat. They're a perfect oyster. It's a nice teardrop shaped oyster, uniform. Basically, you want, you want to dip beard. Okay. So these little beards yeah, like here. Then we'll do the seawater, and then um, we'll do the wood sorrel, the beach peas. And that should be good. So, Mark, walk us through shucking an oyster. All right. Well, there's two ways to do it. If you have a paring knife, you can go in this way. Um, you know, you want a, a really fine tip. Generally, you're gonna go in the bottom here, and you're gonna find a little groove underneath. And, you know, you don't need a lot of effort. You just gotta find that groove, twist your knife, just like that. And you get that pop, and then right about here, you're gonna have uh, the muscle. You're just gonna separate. And you're just gonna separate that. Most people flip them because it presents better on this side. I'm gonna use, we'll use these. The flowers are really good. So, Tasty? just mm -hmm. yeah, okay. pick the leaves off. That's easy, guys, look. You can do that. Do you want any of this stuff or any of the... Um, we'll use, well. this is gonna be for the mussels, okay. as is this. Okay. Um, we'll decide on that later. Okay. So we're going to put this wood sorrel in, um, it's very citrusy, a little acidic, um, it'll give it that lemony flavor, you know, lemon white wine, it's a very, very classic uh, muscle preparation, and uh, so without being very, very acidic, you still get the same flavor out of it. Um, and then we'll finish it with the flowers from the same plant, a little white sorrel flowers. We don't even need butter. Woo! Put it on. So this is just going to give it some, uh, some earthiness and uh, some bitterness. Other than frying it, you never want to cook an oyster all the way through. You just want to warm it and you know, it's a whole different flavor profile than a, a cold, salty. I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah, man, that tastes good. Yeah. It's like almost oh, yeah. like a, it's smoked. Uh, so you just simmer them a little bit, kind of burn off that alcoholic fla flavor. Uh, and then you get that really umami, wheat um, flavor from that. It pairs very well. Now we're making a salad with uh, fried oysters. Um, 
pristine mussels, all the beach greens that we foraged earlier, and uh, we made a little vinaigrette with the North Brewing uh, Summer Saison and a little bit of oil. You know, you don't have to complicate things. You really don't, and you know, the flavors speak for themselves. Ooh. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> Let's have a little quick toast to the chef, shall we? Yes. Yeah, and to this amazing taste that we're in right now. Absolutely. Yeah. To Trevor. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. It's a pleasure, Michelle guys. Michelle and the family. It is. Mark, it's a guys, George. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you guys very Thanks much. For this lovely dish. <laughs> Get that nice saltiness. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yeah. Come on. No, that's not right. right. Being out here, that's awesome. eating stuff that's mm -hmm. on this property, everything came from, be like, you know, 50 meter radius. It's amazing. Okay, so I've had oysters now, I'm gonna say at least in eight different countries. Who wants to try some crab? <laughs> I definitely do. I do. And of all the countries that have had oysters, this is singularly the best one I've ever had. Wow. Really gave us a good perspective on like what's around you. Like we're sitting here, you know, we, Jan and I explore every, all over this coast, all over the place, and to, to know that there's food everywhere yeah. mm -hmm. that we could be eating the whole time, and to know, to now have a better understanding of of, uh, of our surroundings is pretty, it's pretty cool, man. It was, thank you for that. It was unbelievable. You know, the food always tastes so much better when you're in a beautiful surrounding. So to our good friends down here at Silver Island, thank you. Now, thank you guys for, for coming and, 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 and experiencing this with us and what we've been building. And uh, I'm glad you guys had a good day and, and managed to pick some good food, eat some good food. It was a great day. Great day for us. Yes. And you know, you always, if you start with an amazing ingredient, you, know, you can only go up from there. So, you know, and that's what we had here is amazing ingredients and really shone through. Get a, you might stab yourself. 